And then the third thing is nothing new. Every year, I always talk about this with the people that I'm helping uh, facilitate the business planning clinic. You need to make sure that in January, you have the largest number of active listings you've ever had in January, ever. Make, make your year pop in January. And the only way to do that really effectively is with listings. And a lot of you are dealing with a marketplace because I already discussed this with Patricia. I knew what your market was probably like and she verified that. You are selling houses fast and it seems like there's not enough listing inventory. <clears throat> the truth is, I'm gonna guess you all know this, you're probably having a record year in sales, a record year. More houses are gonna be sold probably this year in your area than ever before. Now, if you just think about that, the reality is there's no problem with listings because all those sold properties, most of them were buyers buying listings. The problem you've got is listings hit the market and then they're gone just like that. So it seems like there's not enough listings, but the fact is you're selling more property than you've ever sold. So there has to be enough listings or you wouldn't be selling that much property. The problem you've got is you're not getting to the listings fast enough. You are not getting to the listings fast enough. And that simply means you're not talking to enough people. You're not. If you're not going to talk to more people, you're going to struggle having inventory for your buyers and you will not be getting leads off of listings because you ain't got none. <laughs> and listings, particularly in the kind of market you're in, listings are incredibly strong lead generation strategies all by themselves from the Internet, from sign calls, from open houses, listings drive leads like nothing else. And you've got to get on top of this. As an agent, I don't care if you're a team or a single agent, as an agent, you have one basic approach to this business. One, you're either going to be a seller-based agent or a buyer-based agent. And the seller-based agents spend less time working to make money, and they are more profitable as a business, and they control the marketplace due to their signage all over the place. And that's your decision. And some of you, I'm sure, are capable, and you're experienced, and you're selling 30 to 40 houses a year as a single agent, or you're selling 100 plus or minus with a team. But if your numbers, the year is over now, basically, 2020 is baked. You might have some pendings yet to close, but it's baked. If you are a buyer-based agent, I don't care if you're single or a team. In other words, if you do more buyers close than sellers, understand the research here. If you did 30 sales a year and your buyer base 60%, just 60%, that means you'd have 18 closed buyers, 12 closed sellers. If you flip that, the same units, the same money, but at the end of the year, you had 18 closed sellers and 12 closed buyers. Your work week shrinks 20 to 25%. 20 to 25%. That, that is a life worth living. That's how you gain a life worth living is you utilize leverage and listings are leverage. See my shirt? Leads, listings, leverage. That's the game, ladies and gentlemen. That's the game. And as a single agent, you should leverage your own efforts by being seller focused. And well, how that relates to the, the program today is if your lead generation plan is a two-legged stool or a three-legged stool, and you are buyer based in your closed production for the year, you, you might, might need to take one of those legs and get rid of it and get a pure seller lead generation strategy rolling so that you can focus on becoming a seller based agent. So that's my advice. Merry Christmas and happy birthday, Patricia. <laughs> but that's my unsolicited opinion. Now I'm going to pull up the PowerPoint and we will get rolling in the material. Think about while I'm doing that. Think